2016, uh, an important year. How has it started? Well, I think it has started reasonably well, you can say, when you look at the fact that we have uh, managed to, to get a buyer for our Lignite business. But also, uh, times are very tough because prices uh, are still very low and they have gone down during the first part of this year. So I think we're under pressure, but the, it feels good. We are in a transition, which I feel is, is the right thing. Looking at the quarterly results, what are the main drivers? Well, as Magnus said, the, you want, one would have thought that the prices would have reached rock bottom by now <laughs> in the Nordics, but they haven't. Uh, so we are affected. Uh, the areas that are affected by energy only are affected by the prices. But uh, the costs are also coming down, so we are adjusting well uh, in the difficult situation. And the quarterly result is actually thereby better than last year, and the volumes are very good. We tend to focus often on production, but what about other areas such as customers and solutions? Yes, absolutely. We are growing our customer base in, in several places. We are uh, developing new um, models to also sell electricity to our customers. I think we will see a considerable development in that and of course that's very important because that's where we're going to get more of our revenues for the future. But not only there, also in wind, also in heat. Uh, so, so we will be less dependent on the electricity only price. Cost uh, reductions are essential in the strategy to mitigate uh, the market conditions. What's in it for this year? The transition that we're now making with the sale of Lignite makes our business risk mix to be quite good. We're quite happy with that. We have a mix of uh, energy only regulated and quasi regulated business. But they're all unfortunately at low margins, relatively speaking, and thereby we need to have a much lower cost base for the future. We've done a lot, but we are not yet home and we have to continue and continue and continue. So we shrink on the one side, uh, but on the other we grow. Which are the areas we focus on? Well, I think it's uh, important to realize that a company in a transformation phase like we are will suffer in certain places and we will have to have growth in other places if we're going to be able to, to deliver uh, a, a, a new company. So I think that that's, uh, that's what you will see. It will also mean that we, you will have to run cost reductions at the same time as you do expansions, which is a, a difficult thing to grasp. But uh, that's, that's the way we will have to live now and we will come out of it. What about new growth areas such as Solar. Solar is there for the future, I'm quite sure about that. We will see the development uh, predominantly uh, by our customers, but also big scale. We have just to conclude the first big scale uh, 5 megawatt uh, solar park in, in the UK, so we can do that too, and we see combinations with wind power. So that will come and we are also working on a strategy now and see what, what parts of that business can we include in our offerings to our customers. A leap in our strategy towards a more renewable production was the announcement of the Lignite sale. But we have been criticised about the lack of transparency when it comes to the numbers. Any comment? Yeah, I have to say, it, it, I, I, we noted that and, and it's a bit sad because it's a very complicated transaction. And if, if we would have used the normal terms that is used, such as purchase price and enterprise value and equity value, that would actually have been quite misleading because the, transi the transaction presumed that the hedges would have been mo moved over to the Lignite company, which we were unable to do. So we actually used other terms in order to make it more transparent and make it more evident for people what the impact would us, you know, for us would be. So um, uh, we can just note that uh, we did something that people were not so used to. Uh, but I think by the end of the day, when the final results will be published in Q2, they hopefully will realize and understand uh, that the ambition we had was actually to be even more transparent than usual. Any takeaways from uh, the reaction in Sweden and Germany? Well, I think the reactions have been the expected reactions that uh, now you're, you're, uh, you're selling and uh, it's clear that you're selling. There are parts of, of uh, society who thinks we should not sell, that we should actually keep it and close it. We don't believe so at all because we believe it's a German question. But it also shows a clear transformation that has also been picked up that Vattenfall is now going in another direction, which I think is important. And it's actually important to say that this, is, uh, uh, this divestment is good for Vattenfall because it provides us with a direction clearly. It's good for the buyer because they are really in this part of, of uh, their production. And it's also good for our employees in Lausitz because they will have an, uh, an owner who thinks this is a very important business for them.
How convinced are we to get uh, confirmation uh, from the owner? The process must have its time. Uh, of course, I hope that we will have a yes. Uh, and, uh, but we can't really speculate about the outcome of that. Uh, I think that's, that's, that just has to take its uh, time now and, and let's see uh, where it lands. Vattenfall will be a different company after the sale. Uh, how will it impact the rest of the company? Will there be restructurings? I think most of the transformation is already on its way. Uh, the restructuring with a different business mix uh, is already there. So uh, the transaction itself, the sale itself, is, will not cause any restructuring needs. But of course we have to continue becoming even more agile, even more transformative, even having lower costs. So the ongoing work we have right now with reduction of costs have to continue. Uh, and the outsourcing is the next big step uh, of administrative functions to do that. But it's more for me, I think it's a continuous improvement that we all the time have to work towards. Another important issue is the nuclear tax in Sweden. Uh, we still have no clarity on the timeline for a decision. How will that impact uh, the need for uh, investment? We have been very clear to the government and to the Energy Commission about our situation, where we are going to take decisions on the prolongation investments, uh, the independent core cooling safety systems that we are going to install and to keep them going until 2040 something. Uh, and I believe we have progress and understanding for the question that we have because prices, electricity prices are extremely low and of course uh, this big tax at the same time is, is a real problem for us. Uh, and we have uh, gotten some comfort in the fact that, that the politician seems to be willing to really discuss the question. So uh, let's hope for the best. So we have touched upon a few things that make 2016 important. Anything to add? Well, every year is important for Waterfall, but 2016 is an even more important year than normal. Any comment from your side? Lots of things will happen this year. I think we just touched upon a few of those. One is the lignite business, uh, where we have now taken a clear step. The other one is, of course, we have a, also a discussion around the nuclear uh, decommissioning, uh, long-term nuclear decommissioning in Germany, which we think is, is interesting. And then also this nuclear tax thing and, the tr of course, the transformation and the new businesses we're doing in Waterfall. So it's always exciting. But uh, 2016, to sum it up, will be really interesting to see where we are.